Hey guys, I want to share with you something that I'm a firm believer in, and that is why everyone can benefit from incorporating Olympic weightlifting into their lifestyle and their training style in some way, shape, or form. Um, I'm going to go over just some of the basic things, basic principles and beliefs, and then how to incorporate them in a very basic form, um, you know, nothing too in-depth here, but how you can get started in utilizing lifts and not take away from, um, you know, other aspects of training if the Olympic lifts are not necessarily your goals. So, first off, I want to go over just a couple things, a couple basic areas that I think are really useful for incorporating Olympic lifting. Number one, that's cre or increasing your proprioceptive or body awareness, just understanding how well and how your body and your joints move throughout space. Um, they're also going to help increase balance, speed, power, strength, and in my opinion, two of the, the more important ones, both mobility and stability. Um, how are these, or why are these important? Um, especially for the mobility and stability part. Incorporating the lifts requires you to go through a greater range of motion to increase your mobility, but not only to get into a greater end range with uh, multiple joints throughout the body, but also to be able to create stability within those end ranges and provide good posture and good torso strength. And this is gonna lead to a decrease um, in pain and stiffness to an extent, if you're training as an Olympic weightlifter and you're trying to push high thresholds in the lifts, um, there is a risk of a reward barrier there. Um, but if that is not your goal, you're just looking to incorporate and learn the movements, it can be a very useful tool in increasing some pain and stiffness ju just due to fascial stiffness. Um, and it'll also decrease your risk of injury because you have a greater range of motion um, and a greater, greater amount of stability in end range of motion. Um, especially if you're out playing a pickup game of basketball or football, you get tackled or pushed into a bad position, you're less likely to tear or strain something. Um, it's going to increase your strength. Uh, this is going to carry over uh, into a couple different aspects. One, your training style, obviously. Um, but two, it also help carry over into daily life. One, the greater strength reserve you have, just the easier daily tasks are to perform. You're less likely to get hurt because it doesn't require as much strength for you to do something, such as pick up a heavy box off the ground um, or pick up a small child off the ground, things of that nature. If you have a high strength, uh, high amount of strength and your strength reserve is much higher, but then learning to incorporate the lifts, the snatch and the clean and jerk, can help you learn to brace the core, pick something up, and move it either to chest level or overhead up on high shelf um, a little bit easier throughout your life as well. So, uh, another big positive to incorporating the lifts. It'll also help increase your coordination and your balance. I can't think of an instance where this wouldn't be important, um, you know, especially as we walk throughout life you're constantly on one foot at a time. And so, um, you know, being able to have core torso, core torso and overall uh, just coordination and balance is gonna be very important uh, to carry over into your training styles and into your lifestyle. Um, this is a little bit more along the lines of athletic development, but can increase your force transfer and output, teach you how to drive more force on the ground to help you to run faster, jump higher, um, and move with more authority. Uh, and as I've kind of said throughout, but it's gonna help increase your core activation, core stability, when you're catching weights either on your chest or overhead, it requires a massive amount of stability and strength from your, from your shoulders to your knees, incorporating that whole core just to support those loads either on your chest or overhead. Now, ways to incorporate these, because again, if you are not an Olympic weightlifter, there's no reason to push them to a high threshold. It's just going to take away from other things that you could be doing to help benefit your goals a little bit more. Um, so some ways to incorporate them. Uh, include one to three of the basic movements into... Uh, your warm up or cool down. That could be an empty bar front squat, an empty bar overhead squat, just learning how to receive the bar in a snatch, uh, maybe a snatch bounce, things of that nature. The things where we're getting into the positions that are required from the lifts um, with a very unloaded or very low intensity on the, on the bar. Um, generally, I recommend just an empty bar, especially if you're very new to the movements. Once you're comfortable adding some weight over time, um, I would recommend adding them in at the beginning of a lower body or a speed-based training day. Um, especially if you keep them for a low uh, volume and low intensity, this will help increase your neural drive and your core stability and strength for a heavy squat or deadlift day or something of box jumps or that nature. Um, you will also find a lot of people like to incorporate them in a conditioning aspect. This is uh, um, how they partially, partially became popular through CrossFit. Um, this is okay, but there are better routes to learn the movements in my opinion. Um, if you are going to use them in a conditioning format, I recommend using something as an EMOM. So in every minute on the minute where you're doing two to four reps at a very light weight, um, that can range anywhere from 5, 10, 15, 20 minute EMOM, I would just go to the point of technique breakdown. You don't want to continue to throw weight overhead or on your chest to drive weight from the ground to those positions in a bad position and ingrain bad movement patterns, bad motor qualities. Um, be cautious. You'll find a lot of uh, people want to incorporate them in a metabolic conditioning uh, session or a Metcon. 
Again, this is okay, but I would recommend keeping, if you're gonna do so, keep them in uh, five reps or less. Um, this will help focus more on the technique and not worry about just trying to get the weight up any way you can. Um, so again, we're, we're in grading and we're working on uh, quality movement patterns. Uh, this is, uh, again, this is something I'm a firm believer in. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions or you wanna dive further into, um, into the subject. I'd love to share with you, I'd love to help uh, give you some more knowledge on what I've learned over incorporating the movements um, with not only myself, but with a lot of my athletes who have a variety of goals. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Give it a thumbs up. 